Hi everyone, I just want to bring you a quick word about prayer and being consistent in prayer and standing at this time um, for your family, for your nation, for everyone, people who are lost, people who need hope and that is Jesus. So thank you for being here and thank you for all your love and support on this channel, I really appreciate it and I'm praying for you also and when I read the comments I'm praying for you, so thank you. So let's pray. So Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I just thank you for each and every person who is here to listen to this message. May they be blessed, may they be edified, may they be encouraged, may they receive wisdom and understanding, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, Holy Spirit, and have your way, and amen. So um, I just feel like the Lord is just ministering this word about being consistent, you know, because many people give up before breakthrough. They give up why? Because they lack faith, because they're looking at the natural, they're looking at the problem, they're looking at the situation and they go, well, there's no point. And they give up right before there's victory. And, you know, there's different types of prayer. And I've mentioned this before, where people say, oh, God, can I have this? God, can I have this? But then there's warfare. Then there's decreeing and declaring. Then there's fighting. You know, God tells you to fight for what's yours, to take it by force. You know, we're soldiers in the kingdom. We're saints, we're kings, we're priests, and we take things, we decree, we declare things, and it happens. Be consistent and persevere. And God tells you not to give up. You reap a harvest. So you continue. You don't look at the waves. You don't look at the storms. You don't look at the silence. You don't. You keep going and you persevere. But there's one hindrance, one big hindrance, you know, and people would say, would you pray for me for this? Would you pray for me for that? And sometimes Holy Spirit would say, that person needs to forgive someone. So someone who's living in bitterness and anger and hating people in their heart, holding grudges. You know, things happen. They open the door for the devil and sickness can take place and confusion and all the stuff that the devil does where there's, there's grudges, anger and hate and unforgiveness. So maybe someone wronged you. Maybe someone did something to you. We've all messed up. We've all hurt people and people have hurt us. So who are we not to forgive someone when Jesus Christ on the cross um, died and took away the sin of the world and forgave you and forgave me? And then when we came to him and asked for forgiveness, he forgave us and he gave us eternal life. So who are we not to forgive others? Even if it was horrible, even if it was small, even if it was something really big. It doesn't mean you have to be around the person, but you yourself. And if you can't bring yourself to say, I forgive this person, I let go. When you name that person, if you're still feeling that hate and anger in your heart, that's not of God. So that needs to go and that will hinder you and your time with God. Because you see, God does say, I will not hear you. Imagine God the Father says, I will not hear you. If you don't forgive your brother or sister who wronged you, you know, in the scriptures there where um, uh, this guy was forgiven and then he went off and he wouldn't forgive a person who owed him money. He held a grudge and he went against him and he tried to hurt him and said, you pay me what you owe me. You know, so sometimes people will do that, you know, if they don't forgive, they make people pay, they make them suffer. You know, they, they hold grudges, you know, they don't talk to people and it prolongs and there's tension in a household, there's tension in a relationship because of this and it causes problems. And that is pure devil, where there's no communication, where there's no talk. Okay, so the first thing you do is, God says, is forgive those who trespass against you. So sit there and if you say, I can't, you sit there and you say, God, I ask for grace because I'm finding it difficult to forgive this person. And there's hate in my heart. There's anger in my heart. I'm bitter. I don't like it. When I hear that person's name, I want to scream. So make sure that you forgive somebody, whoever it was, even 20 years ago, last week, whatever it was, forgive them and walk in the spirit and watch what God will do. And sometimes God will make you be in a difficult place for a while to be there for someone, you know, who you don't like. But God does a work in your heart, you know, and he's training you as well. Holy Spirit is the best teacher, you know. So that's in Mark eleven twenty five, 
And when you stand, pray and forgive. If you have anything against anyone, your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. I just said that. So people can say, oh, I go to church for 20 years, you know, but they're bitter and they're angry and they just go and they're hearing the word, but they're an angry, angry person. You know, that's the spirit of pride as well. It's just like fear can be pride because it's about self. You know, it's about me. Look what they did to me. Look at me, poor me, victim mentality. So you need to let that go. So it'd be different if Jesus was going to die on the cross and he said, no, I'm not doing this. What, well, they won't respect me anyway, so I'm not going to do this. But no, he endured the cross. He took down the shame, the guilt, all of these things. And he forgave you. So who are you not to forgive others? In Psalm 145 and 18, the Lord is near to them who call upon him. In Luke 11, 9, and I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find it. Knock and it will be open to you. Be persistent. You know, ask, make sure that you're pure. Make sure you've, you've, lived, you've laid down all this other stuff that's in there, all the baggage. Remember that Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary. I will give you rest. And then ask, whatever you ask, without being tossed to and fro, without confusion, without moaning and complaining, it'll be given to you, Jesus said. And also, just kingdom principles. I've mentioned this before. In John 15, 7, if you abide in me, Jesus said, and my words abide in you, if you abide in me, ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you. So when you ask, thank you. Thank you, God, that you're doing this. Thank you, God, that a miracle is going to take place in my life and in my family and my workplace. Thank you, God, that I'm coming out of this hole and you're going to bless me. Thank you, God, that you provide for me. Thank you, God. So like I mentioned in Hebrews 4, 16, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. So we come to the Father. We don't have to do a ritual. We don't have to light 10 candles. We don't have to have to fast five days before God hears us. No, he hears you. Just like Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. Father, I thank you that you hear me. Because he had a relationship with his father. So when you wake up in the morning, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for everything today. Thank you, God, for all that I have. Thank you, God, for my family. Thank you, God, for where I live. Thank you, thank you. Be grateful, be thankful. You know, Hannah was barren and she prayed to the Lord. She wept and she prayed to the Lord. Oh God, give me a child in 1 Samuel and 11. And I'll dedicate him to you. You know, and even when she was praying, her husband thought that she was mumbling, that she was drunk. I told her, just get up, come on, what are you doing? She was praying. You know, God hears you when you're sincere. It's just like repentance. When you are sincere, God really hears you. And he answers you. And some people say, yeah, but I've been waiting this long. Yeah, but I, yeah, well, God is faithful. God is true. God doesn't lie. God is a just God. So be patient. You know, Peter was in prison in Acts 12 and verse 5. They were all praying for him in a room. An angel appeared and he was set free. And then he, when he was knocking on the door, they didn't even believe he was standing there, even though they were praying for him. You see, miracles can take place in a moment, could be the next day, but it will happen. I can testify. God has done amazing things and does amazing things in my life. And he answers prayer. And sometimes it can be a different way than what you asked. It can be even greater. And he uses the most interesting people to bless you and to answer you. And then in Mark 5 and 23, we see Jairus and his daughter was dead, dying. She was dead, but Jesus was going a different way. And this guy ran because he knew this man, I know he can heal my daughter. And Jesus stopped. And this man said, will you heal my daughter, please? Please. You can just picture him begging. And because Jesus seen him and he seen his faith, you can hear faith and you can see faith. He said, go, she's healed. And this girl lived. This girl was healed. 
So sometimes people's prayers are like, oh God, thank you, thank you. And they do it all great and thank you, Father. And yes, and I decree and I declare. And then they don't see anything happen. They go, oh God, why won't you listen to me, God? God. Waves tossed to and fro, up and down and all over the place. Have faith. Believe God. Trust him. When you pray, thank him and wait patiently and continue. God, I thank you that you're doing this. God, thank you. I decree and declare and you're speaking the word of God. Because the word of God is alive. It's living. It's real. We've seen then in Hezekiah and he was told, you want to set your house in order because God said that you're going to die. And that hit him. And he ran and he was crying, God, oh God, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me. I am so sorry. Lord, I've walked with you. I've done all this for you. Please have mercy. And that's in 2 Kings 20 and verse 3. And he says, God, remember me. I'm so sorry. So, you know, when you're by yourself with God, maybe everything's all over the place. You don't know what's happening. You're in a mess. And you go to God. And you're crying, but you're sincere and you're saying, God, oh, please, I'm so sorry, please. Father, in Jesus' name. And it's done. God is hearing you. He hears you. So don't think that you're not being listened to. He hears you. And don't forget also, there's people praying for you. I have people praying for me, just like I pray for you in a completely different country to where you are. Praying, if I read your comment, and I'm praying a prayer. Can you imagine how amazing God is? Jesus also prayed before he was crucified. And he was afraid and he was nervous and he prayed and angels came to minister to him. So how powerful prayer is. And remember even when Moses was coming to God and he was saying, oh God, please, I just want to see you. God do this. He was a friend of God. God was like, yeah, okay. Communication, relationship, things can change. Things can turn around. It's just like if God shows you something not good. So that's why when we get on and we say, right, we need to pray. We need to change things. And things can change. Just like if God says, this person is going to do this. This person be present. This person will be the next leader. This person, but I need you to pray. But if you don't pray, things will be different. Prayer is so powerful, especially when there's two together, two standing in agreement together. Things can change. You know, I've seen miraculous healings in my own life. And people have prayed for testimonies. I've had amazing things happen to me, shocking things. And prayer changed things. Where the enemy might put something there and say, look, it's over. This is going to happen. Just like Hezekiah. But then when you pray and when someone stands and prays in agreement with you, when you're consistent, when you don't give up, and when you say, God, your word says in Corinthians, you're a God who doesn't lie. Hear me, God. You're standing. You're warring. You're coming against the enemy. Things change. So the word of God for you today is number one, forgive. You need to forgive. Also forgive yourself. And also some people get offended at God. They get mad at God. Because some, something didn't turn out the way they hoped or wanted it to turn out. And they get mad at God. So you need to let go of that. You need to drop that. Forgive yourself also if you've messed up. You know, God is merciful. He's gracious. So come to him. Give your life to him. Let go. It doesn't matter if people judge you, misunderstand you. That's people. People will do that. Okay. That doesn't matter. What matters is what God says. And his word is true. So you're loved. You're blessed. You're righteous. You're holy. God loves you. Give it to him and let go. And then be consistent in prayer. Speak the word. Decree and declare the word. And watch what God will do. And don't give up. It's something that God is saying lately. Don't give up. Because the answer is right there. There's people who throw in the towel. They walk away from things. They walk away from people. They stop doing a project. 
They're trying to do something and nothing's working. So they go, oh, there's no point. Even in my own walk with God, I've had to be persistent, even for years in certain things. Before things changed, before things turned around in my own life. You go through things, but he's watching you to be faithful and to be persistent. And don't give up. So I leave that word with you today. Don't give up. Be persistent and let go of grudges, of hate, of anger. What's the point? And allow that darkness in your heart when God has given you life and life in abundance and you're sitting there full of hate when other people are living their life and you're like, no, no, no. Pride and anger. God doesn't like that. So let it go. And have the fullness of the kingdom of God. The fullness of the blessings. Can you imagine missing blessings because of being angry and hating someone? God's grace is sufficient for you. So talk to him today. So Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that you're a God who hears us. We thank you that you're a God who is alive. And who blesses us and protects us. We thank you that you're a God of truth. We thank you that you're the way. We thank you that you're our hope. So Father, for those who are living in hate, in anger, in unforgiveness, Lord, I just break those chains right now and I just pray, Lord, for your grace. More grace to them, God, in Jesus Christ's name, that they let go of the past and of grudges and of hurt and they allow Holy Spirit to heal their heart and to live the fullness of blessings that you died for us to have, abundance of life and overflow in blessings. Father, in Jesus' name, I come against suicidal thoughts and depression. May it leave your people now in Jesus Christ's name, that spirit of death, heaviness and depression and a spirit of loneliness to leave your people. That is a lie from the pit of hell in Jesus' name. I come against every spirit of fear. Lord, those who are living in fear, maybe because they've done something wrong and they're afraid. Lord, you're a merciful God. You can turn all things around. And I just pray right now that they give it to you. And for their protection in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you, God, for protecting us. And I pray a prayer of protection. Psalm 91, over your people, God. Your angels to surround them as they come and go. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you're the best teacher. I pray, Father God. In Jesus' name, for those to have more grace to listen to your word, to learn your word, to learn of you, Jesus, and your ways. That they bear excellent fruit, character. In Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for healing in bodies. Healing where there's sickness, miracles, God, to take place. That they believe you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we thank you, God. Lord, we just thank you for your grace, for your blessings, for all that you do for us. That we live for you on this earth. That our lights shine in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. So God bless you all and go and walk in freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom joy in the presence of God. There's fullness of joy and blessings in the presence of God. So go and receive that. Life is to be lived. So God bless you and have a wonderful day.